Good day. This is the third session on the Zambian Tax Benefit Microsimulation Model, MicroZamod. And in this session, we're going to be looking at the ta tax and benefit policies in a lot more detail. We're firstly going to start off by um, understanding how tax benefit policies are constructed. And in, in this um, instance, we're going to look at functions and parameters. We're then going to look at how to run the model and access the output. So to give a, a brief summary, um, systems contain groups of policies. Policies in turn are constructed from functions and functions perform calculations to create the model output. So again, we can look at this um, diagrammatically. So in MicroZamod version 1.4, we have two systems. We have the 2010 system and the 2015 system. Um, but as I've mentioned, work is currently underway to incorporate the 2016 and the 2017 system. We then have groups of policies. So we have policies on income tax. We have a policy on the social cash transfer. We have a policy, um, two policies on pension contributions. And then we have uh, policies on VAT, excise, um, and other uh, duties. We then have functions which perform calculations to create the, the model output. So for example, in our social cash transfer, that policy is made up of a number of functions. Um, 16 to be exact. But within within these functions, we have, um, um, I mean, within, within this policy, we have functions which perform um, an el eligibility test and um, a function that assigns an amount calculation. So functions are really the building blocks of all policies in MicroZamod. And the combination of different functions from the full set of um, the functions allow for the con construction of almost any policy. So functions can be classified in three categories. We can have policy functions for implementing tax and benefit policies. We can have system functions for implementing the framework of the model. And we can have special functions, which are really used and are not used at all in MicroZamod. So we have 10 functions in MicroZamod. We have four policy functions. We have, um, and these are Elige, BenCalc, which stands for Benefit Calculator, Arathop, um, and ShedCalc. We then have six system functions. And these are Upgrade, DefVar, DefIL, which is Income List, DefTU, which is Tax Unit, DefConst, which is Constant, and Def Output, which we've seen in our previous session. So each function consists of a header displaying the name of the function and a switch um, telling us whether the function is activated, i.e. switched on, or deactivated, uh, switched off, or not applicable, which is an NA. The function is then divided into a series of parameters. So we can have many parameters appearing within multiple functions and some parameters being specific to particular functions. So most of the policy functions and some of the system and special functions provide common parameters. They are compulsory, compulsory and optional parameters. For example, the parameter tax underscore unit must be included in all of the policy functions. Otherwise, MicroZamod will issue an error message. And this is because if we don't include um, a tax unit, the model won't know who to assign the benefit to or who to um, assign the liability of the tax, for example. So MicroZamod is told how to calculate the policy by setting the um, parameters of the functions to appropriate values. So here we have an example of our social cash transfer in rural areas. And again, um, I'll be going through the PowerPoint first and then moving over to the live version of the model to demonstrate um, the concepts. So as I've s I said earlier, our social cash transfer for both um, for rural areas, um, at least, is made up of 16 functions. It's made up of one DefVar function, two Elige functions, which stand for eligibility, one ArithOp function, which stands for arithmet arithmetic um, operator, and 12 BenCalc functions, which stand for benefit calculator. So if we look at the first Elige um, function, which is number 11.2 on the spine, we can see that this, this function is made up of three parameters, or there are three parameters in this Elige function. 
we can then see um, that there are switches um, next to uh, the function, both the function and the policy, and these are currently switched on. So model and look at our social cash transfer for rural areas. We can see, so we can make this a bit bigger so that it's a bit easier to read. So if you click, if you go to the bottom right hand side of the main user interface and where it says text size and click on the little plus sign there, you can make um, the writing a bit, a bit bigger so it's easier to see. So here we have our social cash transfer for rural areas. We have, as I said, it's made up of 16 functions, 11.1 .1 to 11.16 on the spine. We have one def var function, which specifies our intermediate um, intermediate variables that we're going to be using in the model, in the in the policy rather. We have two elige functions, which specify eligibility. We have tw 12 ben calcs, which um, actually calculate a living condition um, index, which is similar to a proxy means test, in order to assign um, the benefit. We then have one Arathop, which um, simply scales the score, um, the scores generated from this calculation, from these 12 um, calculations, scales the score to make it range between 0 and 1000. And then we have two final two Ben calcs um, to assess eligibility. So if we look at those briefly, um, I will go through this in a lot more detail in the final run through of the model in session five. So the final Ben calc assesses all the eligibility condition for the rural um, areas and then allocates the standard um, monthly social cash transfer amount. And um, then we have our output variable, which is BSA underscore S. And all of this is done at the level of the individual. We then have a final Ben calc, which is an additional payment for households containing one or more disabled people. So um, we have our... Um, eligibility for for rural recipients of the social cash transfer and on top of the um, criteria specified in the Ben calc above we have one more criteria which is um, DDI 01 is equal to one which um, indicates that there's uh, one or more disabled people in the household so if um, individuals in rural households fulfill this criteria they are then um, get it they are then allocated another amount, which is double the standard social cash transfer amount. Again, I'll be talking um, about that, about this policy and the rest of them in a lot more detail in our final session. So this is just to give you a brief overview. So our function elige, as I've mentioned already, um, elige determines eligibility and it sets a variable to one if an individual is eligible or zero if they are not, based on one or more conditions. It must contain the parameters elige underscore cond and tax underscore unit. And the conditions may be simple. For example, we can have um, DAG, which um, is a variable um, for age being greater than or equal to 60, or we can have built-in queries such as is Deb child, um, which is basically asking um, if the individual is a dependent child. Each condition is enclosed by curly brackets and conditions may be combined with, with and, which is symbolized by the ampersand um, sign, and or, which is symbolized by a straight um, slash. The components can include variables, income list, numer numeric amounts, functions, and footnotes. And the conditions can be assessed at different levels. And again, um, I'll speak more about these last two bullet points in um, a later session. So here we have an example of implementing the social cash transfer using Elige. So if you remember, um,
So here we have an example of implementing the social cash transfer using Elledge. So if we look at our Elledge function, we see that it's made up of three parameters. We have our Elledge underscore cond, we have our output underscore var, and we have our tax underscore unit. And if you look at the criteria specified in the 2015 system under in our first parameter, Elledge underscore cond, we see that we have um, a variable called DHH equals to one. So again, if we wanted to find out what this variable was, we would use our data requirement document and look for this variable in that document. But for the purposes of this PowerPoint, I'll just, t um, of this um, video rather, I'll just tell you what the variable is. So the D, as you'll remember, is the broad category of the variable. And in, we know that um, in Euromod, and microzamod that D stands for demographic variable. So in this case, the D stands for demographic, at demographic and the HH stands for household. So this um, first criteria is saying that in order for the person to be eligible to receive the social cash transfer, they have to be the head of the household. So that has to equal to one, indicating that they have to be the head of the household. And the second part of the criteria states that DSD has to equal to one. Again, D broad category of variable um, standing um, or meaning rather demographic variable. And then the SD stands for same district. So in this case, um, the individual has to have resided in the same district for um, 12 months. And if you look at our comment section, you can actually see that we've um, stipulated um, these variables in the section. So DSD equals one means that the individual has been in the same district for 12 months and DRU is equal to naught is a, is a demographic variable looking at whether the household is in a rural area or urban area. So in this case, DRU equals to naught equals, means that um, the household is in a rural area um, Whereas if DRU was equal to one, which is the case for the social cash transfer in urban areas, this would mean that the household is in an urban area. So again, we can go over to the model and look at this first um, elledge. So here it is on the model. We've got our three parameters um, in our elledge function. We've got our three criteria for eligibility for the first part of the eligibility, which I've already explained. So after um, an individual fulfills all of these three criteria, an output variable called I underscore score rural underscore 12 underscore M is generated. And this is an intermediate intermediate um, variable that we, we will use um, throughout this, this policy in order to calculate um, the final eligibility. And then again, um, our tax underscore unit um, is at the level of the individual. So that's um, our first elledge function. We then have our arithop function. And arithop is just a simple calculator. It must contain the parameters formula and tax unit. A formula, again, can include variables, income lists, numeric amounts, queries, and footnotes. And the main operators here are brackets, um, the plus, minus, multiplication, and division. So just normal, um, um, simple calculator. And the queries automatically calculate particular conditions, for example, number of children in the household, or carry out tests, for example, whether or not a person is married. and um, if you remember our built-in query that we saw in our previous, um, in our eligibility, when we looked at, at our eligibility, um, we can also similarly have queries in our Arithop function. So footnotes are used, for example, for applying upper and lower limits to a function or variable or specifying a level. And this, this is denoted by a hash. So here we have um, an example of implementing the social cash transfer using our Arithop. And I've spoken about this briefly, but I'll go back to it um, on the model and look at it there. 
So we have one arathop, which is number 11.4 on the spine. Um, and in this case, what this arithop is doing is it's scaling the score, the score generated from um, um, this um, in effect proxy means test, which is the living conditions index. So it's scaling the score to make it range between 0 and 1000. So what it d does is it takes the intermediate variable called i underscore rule underscore live under underscore score adds a number of 1854, just a simple addition, and then divides by another number, 6.904. And all the reason it's doing this is just to make it scale, um, to make the, the score range from between 0 and 1000. So this is just a simple um, calculator. And then the output variable which is generated is called i underscore rule underscore live underscore score underscore scaled. And all of this is done at the level of the individual. So again, we've just seen that on the model. So the last function that we're going to be talking about is our BenCalc. So BenCalc combines the functionalities of Elegy and Arathop, and this is particularly useful for benefits um, or social grants, and is often referred to as the benefit calculator, as previously mentioned. So there are eligibility conditions, similar to our Elegy um, function, called comp underscore cond and formulae to calculate the value of the benefit assigned to eligible, eligible individuals or tax units. And these can either be called comp underscore per elig or comp underscore per TU, which is tax unit. So again, the same rules for syntax apply as for elig underscore cond in elig and formula in Arathop. So it's just combining the two, um, those two functions. So BenCal can have multiple conditions with different amounts being assigned for different conditions. And this is what makes it particularly useful, is that um, instead of always using El Elegy and Arathop together, you can just um, have a BenCalc and um, have multiple conditions with different amounts being assigned for different conditions. Uh, and the eligibility conditions and corresponding formulae are specified in separate parameters. So here we have um, an example of implementing the social cash transfer using a BenCalc. So I think I'll go over to the model to explain this one. So in this BenCalc, we're combining the functionali functionalities of both Elige and Arathop. So our comp underscore cond is our eligibility criteria for rural areas. So as I mentioned um, earlier on, we have uh, one condition stating that the individual must be the head of the household, which is DHH equals to one. We have another condition specifying that the individual must have resided um, in the same district for 12 months or more. And then in that, uh, we specify that intermediate variable called I underscore rule underscore 12 underscore, I mean, underscore 12 M. And so if that is equal to one, that means that they have been living in the same district for 12 months or more. And additionally, we didn't look at this because it's in the second um, eligibility function, but we also have a, a fit for work ratio test. And the output variable that we generated from that, the intermediate variable is called I underscore rule underscore fit underscore four underscore work. And if this is equal to one, this means that they meet the, they have, pass that fit for work ratio test. In other words, that there are no um, adults who are fit for work. So we have um, three, those three criteria for rural areas, which are all initially defined in the first two Elige functions. So if I can open those up um, very briefly, we see that we have all those criteria and in addition um, the fit for work ratio test. So we've combined all of those into the single Ben Calc. Additionally, we have one more criteria, which is that the scaled score, which we generated from um, this living conditions index has to be less than 460. 
And the intermediate variable that we use in this regard is called I underscore rule underscore live underscore score underscore scaled. Again, um, when I go through the entire model and go through every policy step by step, this should um, be a lot more clearer than it is now. So if an individual fulfills all of these criteria, then they are allocated the standard monthly cash, social cash transfer amount per household, which is 70 kwacha per month. And the output variable which is generated is called BSA underscore S. Um, B standing for benefit, SA standing for social assistance, and underscore standing for simulated. And all of this is undertaken um, at the level of the individual, and the amount is allocated to the head of the household. So that's how, that's how we've um, implemented the social cash transfer using a BenCalc. So the last function that we're going to be looking at is uh, a function called shed calc. So shed calc bas basically takes a base amount and then calculates um, a schedule of rates, for example, income tax bans. Um, so again, I'll move over to the model to explain this one as well. So if we go to our um, income tax policy, which is number nine on the spine, if we open that up, go to our third function, which is our shared calc, we see um, how this function has been implemented in the model. So what this function does, it takes a base, in this case our base is called TTB underscore S, it then applies um, a series of tax bands on the income. So um, for example, if an individual is earning um, between zero and 36,000 kwacha per year, they pay zero tax. So if you earn between zero and 36,000 kwacha per year, you pay zero tax. And then the next band, uh, once you start earning 36,001 kwacha to 45,000, um, 45,600 kwacha, then this next um, band of income is taxed at, at 0.25, so 25%. And then um, from 45,601 to 70,800, um, that next portion of income is taxed at 30%. So as soon as you start making 45,601, this to 70,800, um, you then tax 30% on that portion of income. And then the last band is um, when you start making 70,801 kwacha per year and above, you're then tax taxed 35% on that portion of income. And then, um, so the model calculates all of these um, various tax, applies all these tax bands to the income, and then generates a variable called TIN underscore S, which stands for, the T stands for tax, and the IN stands for income, um, underscore S stands for simulated, and all of this is done at the level of the individual. So, um, I've already gone through how um, the schedule of rates to um, income tax bans is applied in the model. So now we're going to look at running the model. So micro Zamod output is based on two inputs, um, an individual and household micro data and the rules on how to calculate taxes and benefits stored in the content file. So using these two information sources, the model calculates all taxes and benefits that have been implemented. The calculations are carried out for each individual and household in the data set and the result is written to an output file. The simulated output is at the, individu is at the individual level unless specified otherwise. So in order to run the model, we need to go to um, the run micro Zamod, which is currently still called run Euromod button in the top left corner of the user interface to activate the run micro Zamod dialog box. 
So then um, a list of systems which are ready to run will, will appear and we need to select a system for running by checking the box to the left of the system. So the list also provides a drop down box for each system which contains all available data sets. Currently, we only have one data set that we're using in MicroZamod, which is the 2010 um, LCMS. So the output path, which is at the bottom of the, uh, the run dialog um, box, defines the folder where the model stores its output. So once the required selections have been made, click on the run button to start the simulation process. So we can go over to the model and actually do this now. So we'd go to the run Euromod button as it's still currently called. Um, depending on which systems we want to run, we would either tick or untick. So in this case, I'll just run both the 2010 and the 2015 system. And if we click on run, and most importantly, um, the output path is specified. And most importantly, the output path is specified um, um, at the bottom of the run dialog box. So then we can click on run. And wait for our model to run. So while it's running, I'll just go through the rest of the PowerPoint. So that's, this is what we've just seen. So all system data set combinations selected for the running um, are listed. So currently we are running the ZM underscore 2010 system uh, with the 2010 data set and the ZM underscore 2015 system again with the 2010 data set. In the second column, we have the status of the run. So the run can either be running as we, we just saw it could be queued, it could be finished or aborted. So on our PowerPoint, we can see that the run has finished and we'll go over to the model in a second to look at whether or not our uh, run has finished. But um, it's important to note that the time needed by the simulation depends on the PC processing speed, the size of the data set and the complexity of the system. So now we can go back and check if our model has finished running. So as we can see, our model has finished running and it took um, just under a minute to run both systems. So as we can see, there's an error log, but in this case, there are no errors. If, um, if the run is finished and there's an error log, it will simply contain warnings. Um, but if there are fatal errors, the run will be aborted. So in our case, that didn't happen. So this is our er error log. You can see we have no fatal errors. So when MicroZamod has finished its calculations, the output is stored as one or more text files at the storage place defined in the field output path, which is at the bottom of our um, run dialog box. The main text file is called, um, for example, zm underscore 2015 underscore std, as defined in the policy output underscore std underscore zm. And in this case, ZM stands for Zambia 2015 is the system name and STD stands for standard output. The file contains the variable defined in the policy output underscore STD underscore ZM. Output files can be viewed in a text editor program or imported into any statistical analysis package, for example, Stata, for more detailed analysis. A selection of summary statistics can also be calculated within the model using the statistics presenter application, um, which will be the focus of session five of this training. The stats presenter uses the output file, for example, zm underscore 2015 underscore std. The model also produces a header text file relating to the output file and error logs relating to the output file are also stored as text files. So now we're going to spend some time um, exploring the benefit policies together. And in particular, we will look at, in detail at the functions Elige, Arathop, and BenCalc. Thank you very much. <laughs>